Hello everyone, it's me. Um, let me find the chat. Hold on. I'm here a little early as well, so there we go. All right, got the chat running. All right, close my Etsy shopping cart. I was <laughs> looking up stuff. Um, okay, just closing everything down, except for my website. Here it is. So I'm sure, <laughs> hi Sue, hi Jebeth. I'm sure that, hi Starbucks, Kenny, hello, hello everybody. So this is the coloring page that I will be linking right here. I'm sure that we're going to have many people ask this question, so I'll be linking it throughout the course <laughs> of the video, I'm sure. So you can go ahead and download this for free. Um, so what happened? <laughs> Yeah, like, what happened here? This isn't a coloring page from your book. Um, so what happened is uh, we did that Metal Gear coloring. And let me just adjust the camera a little because you can see the stand. Um, let's just see if I can. There we go. Maybe a little bit closer, but that's okay. We're going to zoom in anyway later. So um, what happened was we did that Metal Gears video, and um, it, it seems to be fairly popular. And the amazing feedback is, is that people have been requesting um, me to do other materials. So um, <laughs> obviously, I have some pages with gemstones in them, um, the Gem Fay most notably. But I thought if this is going to become a regular thing, I should just create a series of practice worksheets so that way um, it's a little bit easier for everybody who, say, um, doesn't have the book. So I have here two different versions. This is the dark version. I printed it. Um, I know people are going to ask me this as well. Um, wow, Leslie, welcome. Thanks for coming. So I printed this guy off on my regular printer at home. This is the dark version, the dark line art version. I printed it off on just sketch paper. This is the paper I used to actually draw it on. <laughs> so, um, but this is a slightly creamy color paper. So for the video itself, I actually printed it on 1114 paper and I printed it um, in such a way that it actually has margins on both sides. Um, and I printed it, if you're wondering about this paper, you can print it on this Bristol. I'm using Smooth. I also like the vellum. It doesn't really matter. Um, this is the 1114, and I have it turned this way. But you can get a 9 by 12 and, and leave it this way if you want. The reason I did the margins is so that way we can take notes on the colors. Um, hi, Shannon. Hi, Christina. Hello, who else popped in while I was chatting? So anyway, this is going to become a regular series. Um, I already have a playlist up on my channel, and I put the two gear videos in there. Um, so I'm not going to rush through this. This is a real-time tutorial series, so um, we're just going to work on this page until you guys are happy with it. So what I want you to do in the chat and... Um, you know, feel free to ask more for more than one. I just want you guys to put in any gemstones or crystals that you would like to see me work on right now. And I'm going to grab a sticky note and just write these down. We're going to get to as many as we can today. And then we're also going to do probably another one in this particular page. Um, oh, congrats, Sue. That's so exciting. Hi, Amanda. Thanks for coming. Hello, hello. Hello, anybody else I missed? 
If you're just coming in, this is the link to the free page that you can download now and print and color along with us. Um, I'm also going to be, if you're in my email list, you will also get that link. That's good only until the end of the month, so you should snag it now while you can. Um, what I'm going to do is these uh, worksheets that I've been creating, um, I've already created actually several more of these for future videos. <laughs> Um, so what's exciting is these will be also available as a cheapy little bundle pack in my Etsy shop. I think I'll do like, um, four or five at a time. A ruby sapphire. Okay, a ruby sapphire. Is that like just a ruby? Oh, you mean ruby and a sapphire? Anything and everything. <laughs> Gems, yes, it's going to be a lot of fun. So this is something that everybody has been requesting. Here's the darker version. It might pick up better on camera. Um, so I drew this page just for us to practice with. Amethyst, my sister will love that. She is definitely a February baby. Hello, welcome Katrina. Hi, Dr. Steve, good morning. Topaz. That's my birthstone. You can definitely do that. Now for topaz, it actually comes in a wide variety of color. So do you want the the typical um, sort of like honey color or do you want like a more bluey color? Um, awesome. All right. Anybody else want to see what we have so far is ruby, sapphire, amethyst, and topaz. Imperial, yes, the honey color. All right. So we have red, blue, purple, and like a honey, lemon, yellowy color. Um, let's do diamonds. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do three views of diamonds. So we have this view, this view, and this view. Now, what I haven't told you guys yet what you can't see, but it's right off camera, is that um, the last one we did two um, high quality brands. Um, this one, we're going to do something different. It's a practice worksheet, and I thought, let's be budget friendly. So I am using Crayola color pencils. <laughs> so here you go. You guys here, um, let me, oh, let's just show you. So I have a pack of 100, and they just are sitting right here, ready to go. So you can see I've barely used them. I use them um, very, very little so far, so I'm not familiar with them. So I also made a little color chart for myself. So this is what I'm going to be referring to throughout the course of the video. Um, if you want to use another brand of pencils, please do. I just figured I would do a um, video where it's using a budget brand, and that way, um, <laughs> if you don't have one of the other fancy brands, um, you can always go and just get yourself a pack of Crayola. Um, let's see, let's check out Diamond. Yes, gotcha, Ken Kenny. Emerald. Yes, love emeralds. Now, I believe emeralds are considered a crystal, so we can do a cut one and also, and I think amethyst as well, so we can do like a cut one. And then also like a more natural one for both of those. Um. <laughs> All right, diamond, diamond. All right. So um, I'm, I'm still just taking requests. Um, so if you want to use another brand of pencils, um, we you know, I can, um, you know, do another video where we use another brand. I just figured it'd be fun to try something um, a little bit um, more budget friendly. So it doesn't matter the brand. I think we can have fun no matter what. All right, so I'll just start going then on. Let's let's start with the diamonds at the top. Um, and then we can kind of go into the color list that, that we started. All right, can everybody see that okay? It's like a little sm smudge there. <laughs> All 
All right, so for the diamond, it's a little dark, isn't it? Let's see if I can. Nope. The fun of a cell phone. Wait, let's see. Just checking. Um. Oh, hi, Sing. Thank you. Which which one? Um. <laughs> so let's start with the diamond. And um, what I'm going to do is write. Actually, let me zoom out just a little bit. I'm going to be writing here on the side of the paper, um, the list of colors that we're using. And this time, let's use. I was using a pencil before, but let's not waste the pencil. I'll use a ballpoint um, just to list the colors that will also make it easier to read, I think, as well. All right. Um, hi, Zeely. <laughs> awesome. Hello. Okay, so let's just jump right in. We're using Crayola color pencils. So, um, also, just to make it easier instead of drawing lines, because I'm going to get into the depths of this at some point, I'm just going to write letters. So this is A. So up at the top here, let's see if I can put it in camera. I'm just going to write A. And we're going to write diamond, just so we know what we're trying to go for. All right. <laughs> uh, oh, that's all right. Excellent. Yeah, there, there's no deadline, so that you're not late to anything. Um, all right, so let's pick out. Now, I have my color chart right here, which is great. Um, so I can use that. I have slate here. Oh, did I not finish it? Of course I didn't finish it. That's all right, though. Um, <laughs> I'll grab a scrap. Just so that way I have something to test on. You guys know me by now. I love my scrap paper. Okay. That's quite nice. This is a bluey gray. So we'll try here. This is in the Crayolas. So this is Slate, it's called. So let's write that down. Okay. Um, cool. All right, so for diamonds, um, you can go a couple different ways. Um, I find that sometimes it's really easy for diamonds just to remember that they're transparent, right? So um, they're not going to be completely opaque. So what I want to do for the diamond Let's draw in the other side of this diamond. Usually this is the type of drawing that we get when we um, have a coloring book. We get like this um, very simplified diamond shape. But say we want to make it look realistic. So this really won't help us too much. We need to do a little bit more drawing on our own. So this is what we're gonna do and don't be scared to draw, we can always erase this. So that's why we start drawing lightly and we, we do it first um, before we really get into the, to the actual, um, to the coloring. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go, you see this angle here? We're gonna go down from this point at a similar angle. And then let's just drop that right down to this point. So it's, might seem weird at first, but just follow along. So again, from this point, the far point over here, we're going to just drop that down to about the same length here. And then let's just go to that point as well. So now we've got something happening here on the interior of the diamond. So let's connect this point here with this point here. And again, this point here, let's connect it with that point there. Now we have sort of an interior shape, sort of like the shape at the top. So let's connect these guys here. 
and all of a sudden it's starting to look already more transparent just by drawing in these lines. But now let's get to actual coloring. So again, I like to break things up. So um, the key with diamond and actually any shiny object that you're going to notice on this page, there's going we need two things. So pay attention. This is really important. We need really dark darks and the white of the paper. And if we have those two things, then it will look shiny no matter what color it is, what shape it is, doesn't matter. And you know, it's funny, I used to stress out about it. I used to look at photos for reference and all that. But what I've discovered is that it doesn't matter where you put the lights and the darks as long as you pay attention to the light. So let's decide our light source for this diamond. Um, let's say that the light source, and I'm just gonna draw right above it so that way we remember. Let's say the light source is coming from this direction. And the reason I'm drawing this is because it makes it a lot easier to remember. You don't have to draw it on your page, especially when you're doing a coloring page. Just pick the light source of the page itself. Um, but for here, for this demo, let's just have a little arrow. Okay, hi, Melody. <laughs> yeah, that's the song. <laughs> Uh huh, and yep, Shannon, another good song. We've got lots of songs going on here. Um, <laughs> hello, Tascan. <laughs> Everybody's singing in the chat. That's great. Hello, everybody. Okay, so we have um, we have some inner diamond stuff going on here. So let's just um, let's just play on that a little. So let's say that this this line back here that we drew, let's just say that there is a um, a darkness on that corner, and the reason why let's just make believe for a second the light is entering through right here, and so it'll pass through like this. So. Um, even though it's transparent, it will block some of the light. So we'll still have a shadow. And um, yeah, so let's just decide, okay, this corner over here, because this corner is giving the most light, let's make this in shadow. But I'm leaving a gap right where the line, can you guys see this okay? Or should I zoom in some more? Hold on. There we go. So... I'm leaving a gap where the, the line is up there, and I'm just going down right below it. So it's like that little edge there. I want that to have some light. And if it helps you, you can draw a little container for it, if you will. I don't want to go right to the edge of that. I want that light to be hitting it. So, um, let's see, can you see? You got it. Zoomed in, huh? <laughs> Shannon. Yeah, you can really lose track of time when you're coloring. Oh, Leslie. Well, that's okay. We're gonna, okay, so the trick is we're gonna leave some of the white of the paper. Actually, a lot of this is gonna be white. So we've got this little corner here and we just darkened it. Now, another trick that I have with um, gemstones and diamonds in particular is I like to alternate dark, medium, and light colors. So right now we're working on a medium color. So I'm gonna jump around to a different section of this diamond. Um, let's say at the bottom of the diamond, we have another transparent thing happening. So let's, let's do another drawing. So this time we're going to go right here and attach to this line, which is on the other side. And remember these lines came from the other side. That sounds like supernatural, but you know what I mean. Okay, so we have like this, <clears throat> excuse me, you can also just create a little oval. This isn't going to be super precise, but what I'd like to do is now just take one of these corners, and I'm just picking at random, 
One of these corners is going to be dark. This is on this front facet of the gem. So I'm also going to extend this up in a lighter touch with the same line like so. And maybe I'll darken this corner. Again, we're just kind of picking random spots to make dark and light. As long, remembering that we're focusing on the shape and structure and um, just alternating. So maybe I also want this side of the diamond to be dark. So let's just against the very outer edge and kind of flowing inward. Now you can see I'm variating my pressure. Um, I'm pressing harder down near the edge of the diamond and lightening up my touch as I go inward. And I'm leaving like a corner of this completely bare. It, it's just the white of the paper. Um, another angle which I kind of want to make dark, but we're going to use a different, um, let's use a different color. Let's see, is there anywhere else that we should maybe over here? Now I love using this bluey color, but really the colors that you choose should depend upon the environment in which the diamond lives. So if it's on a background where it's got a lot of red, then you would want to put red in your diamond. Um, so this is kind of tough to do, like um, to show in an environment where it's on a white paper, but you'll see as we go, um, whatever color this gem will be, I'm going to add some of that in the diamond. So we're going to come back to this guy as we progress on the page. Um, okay, so now I've got here, let's write it down. We've got black. So I'm just going to write it down over here in my little... My little list. Um, so over here, let's let's choose... This corner to be really dark. Um, I don't know why, let's just do it. So we've got this corner here and it's on the interior of the diamond and even though I've got black I'm not pressing down too hard on it. Get kind of like a darker gray than the slate but not full on black yet. Okay, now we have like this edge here. I hope that you guys can see this okay. Right there, I want to make it darker than what was below it. And now going up, let's lighten up our touch again and maybe not go all the way to the edge of the line for all of that. So you can see it's just about gradients and varying your pressure. Okay, now below that line, I'm going to skip a little, and now let's make this super dark. So I'm going to sketch it in first. And I'm just not going all the way to the line there on the outer edge. And now let's make this really dark at the bottom. Okay, so <laughs> that might feel out of place, but let's put in another one and you'll see sort of how it starts to come together. So let's do a, a dark corner right here. Now I'm gonna not do the whole shape of the object here. So let's start out first with the gray and light pressure. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm totally not paying attention to chat. Hold on. Let's see. Hi, Paint Girly. Thanks for coming. Let's see who else. Hi, B. Hello, hello, Sue. I think I said hi. Hi, Rochelle. Hi, May. Hello. Happy Friday. Yes, indeed. Um. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna go in. And if you guys have other color. Um, gems that you want to request, you can put them in the chat. Just pop it in all caps. Um, since there's more people here than I'm accustomed to. And then, um, yeah, then I'll add it to the list here. 
Okay. <laughs> well, thank you guys for staying up late and watching. Uh, not much time I am working. Well, that's all right, Karula. Thanks for joining. Um, I love my lurkers. I lurk myself a lot in videos, so I totally get that. Um, okay, so let's do another dark area. So I'm going to just go right here. Maybe I don't want to do total black there. So it's funny how... <clears throat> excuse me, let me take a drink. It's funny how um, you can really get a lot of variation out of just a few pencils. Um, and it really does come down to pressure and um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, now I'm just creating random shapes. I feel like this facet needed to be sort of emphasized more because of all the stuff that was passing through it. So now I'm drawing over what I drew before and just creating another shape. <laughs> So this line here also feels like it needs a little emphasis, so I'm just going to go in. So the trick when you're doing this is just to try not to go overboard and get rid of all of the white. So I'm going to stop there, that feels. I might want to add, let's add more contrast right here at this corner. Let's just press a little bit harder on the pencil right here. And create a darker spot maybe yeah okay <laughs> all right so and let's let's have some fun with the um with this side here as well so let's say maybe the light is passing through but we have this shape down here can be a little bit darker and i'm not gonna go all the way to the edge there. I want this corner to really stand out. And maybe maybe we have another sort of like surface thing happening here where I, instead of using um, a shading technique I use more like a hatching where I just sort of draw lines on there. Um, I feel like that also helps with texture. And let's let's do some surface shading on the top of the diamond. And I'm just going in a um, sort of an angle that isn't already on there. So that way, kind of, again, going contrary to what's there makes it feel like that's a different surface. Since the light's coming from this direction, I thought, um, lines going in a similar direction would be good. So now we have this center bit. Um, let me just, let's just do a little bit of, um, let's see, let's do a little background work here. So you can see guys, I'm just sort of picking random spots. And then, um, we're just adding to it. It'll it'll get better and better the more we add to it. Um, we just have to be, again, just really careful of the white, um, retaining some of the white. So let's do a little bit right there, but I want this side to be darker than this side. Um, let's do a little bit of shading in the back there. Just bring that element down a little bit. And um, let's see, maybe let's emphasize this bottom area right there. All right, so quickly this is starting to get filled up. <laughs> But I want to add more contrast. So here's where it gets fun. Um, you can go ahead and just with this black pencil, just add pops of black 
in just key spots where you feel like there's too much gray or too much white. So like this here doesn't have anything at all. I'm just going to pop in just a little bit of that right underneath. And by having the white against the black, you create the kind of contrast that makes it look sparkly. So I think that's the real key there. Um, okay, so the thing is, is like, I know diamonds have a lot more inner shapes in them. So let's, <laughs> let's actually grab another color. Um, I'll grab here. This has a more blue tone to it. Let's try Wild Blue Yonder. I'm just writing that down. All right, so let's let's just break this up a little bit more. So let's try, um, let's go right in the center here of this. So I'm trying to pick areas that are already shaded and just sort of accentuate and break up the shapes a little more. So maybe this guy has a similar thing here. And let's see. Is this starting to look? <laughs> um, sing. That's a really good question. Um, I think for faces, I would have to say probably my small set of luminance, maybe. Um, I I am partial to my. Prismacolor because those are the ones I've been using the longest. That's what I used to use as a kid. But to be honest with you, lately I've been finding that the Luminance pencils are beautifully soft and wax-based, but um, have more pigment in them. So I tend to prefer those. Um, but as far as like a hard pencil goes, um, it definitely wouldn't be the Crayolas. I'm just using them now as a budget pencil. I think my Polly's are probably my favorite. So I use a combination of Luminance and Polly's quite often in my work. Um, you'll see for, I only have like a small set of Luminance, which are mostly in skin tones. Um, so I use those for my portraits a lot. And then I use the Polly's for the rest. Um, but yeah, I use all of my pencils. Like right now I'm using the Crayola 100 set. And it really doesn't matter. Um, it's still super fun. I hope that answered your question. So let's zoom out and just take a look at this because when we zoom in, it gives you a different perspective. So zooming out, I can see that um, this is starting to look fairly diamond-like. However, let's put in a little bit more contrast. So I'm gonna put away this and grab my black again. And just at the very back here, you can see it kind of like fades off a little. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a little bit of shading right at the edge there. And let's also give it a shadow. Now, since the light is coming from here, our shadow will come off like this. Let's just pretend like it's standing up at a point. So I'm just drawing these light little lines coming off. And now as I get closer to the diamond, 
Now I'm just shading very gently right to that point. So giving it a context will also help give it some um, realism, if that helps. Uh, small set, sure, Melody, of course, let me show you. Where is my roll up? Here it is. Okay, so here's, I'll just move that aside for a second. Here's my favorite pencil roll up. I use this one the most lately. So here's all of my polys. You can see it's a set, a small set of polys that I added some skin tones to. And then here's my small set of Lumis. These are all of my Lumis. You can see they are very well loved. <laughs> some of them have already been replaced. Um, this one has been replaced already. So he's on, I'm on my second one of sepia. <laughs> so this is my small set. It's about 15. But I use this roll up the most. I usually, when I'm just coloring on my own, this is the roll up I pull out and use. You got it. All right. Hi, Astro Guy. <laughs> it's okay, Lee. Go get yourself some coffee. Um, yes, Melody, I have, I think, 15 luminance. They're, they're all the ones that you see right here. So it stops right here with this gray one. These are all of my luminance. So I use these for skin tones. I have a dark green one I use sometimes for guys, like around their whiskers. I also have a gray one for things like eyes and teeth. So those, these are all of my luminance. And then these are all of my polys that you can see here. So um, it starts with this purple one and it goes to this guy here. So it's, um, I believe there are 24 polys and then I added some additional ones to that just to find them open stock. So they, these are all of my Lumis and polys. I don't have any other ones hidden somewhere that I am not showing you. <laughs> um, yep, I hope that answers your question. Um, I'll probably end up getting more of both of those sets. It's just that when I'm new to a pencil, I don't know if I'll like it, so I don't buy a full set. Usually, um, for the polys, I was gifted a 24 set from a friend who had a set and wasn't using it. And then um, I added on my own colors. Um, I added, I usually just buy skin tones if I like for the luminance. Um, I just bought skin tones because that's typically what I do the most is portraits. So buying the skin tones out of any color pencil brand is usually a smart move for me. I can usually find use for it. Um, but then if I really like them, then of course I will go and buy more. So that's probably what I'll do for both of those. Hi, Sammy. Hiya. <laughs> oh, so good to see you. Okay, so we did a diamond already. Let's keep going. Um, so let's see here. Let's try another kind of diamond. This is very similar, so I'm going to skip it for now. We can do that in another color. But let's do, you see, oh, that's too far. Let's see. You see diamonds like this all the time where you can see the face. We could even do a small one just to be time-saving, actually. I'm doing well. How are you, Sammy? Okay, so let's mark this guy. Let's do a small one and, and save some time. Let's do B. So B is also a diamond. And we can come back later and do other colors in these other gemstones. Um, so again, this is a really simple drawing. Um, a lot of coloring books have, let's see, can you guys see this okay? A lot of coloring books have drawings like this and you're like, what am I gonna do with that, right? Um, I can see you, Kenny. 
Hi, Dusty. Hi, Rebecca. Hello, everybody popping in. Um, <laughs> so um, we have a little diamond here. So let's just have some fun first by, again, breaking this up a little more. If you break it up into smaller bits and color it that way, it makes it a little bit easier. And also, I find it looks more realistic. So let's start, let's just pick a point in the center and just work our way out. So what I'm doing is now I'm drawing point to point. So the center point in there, center point. So now we have like a little star type of pattern. Let's break that up even more. So I have there, there. I'm just picking random spots. Again, it doesn't have to be, okay, that's gonna be dark there. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you make a mistake, just make it a dark spot. Um, <laughs> it's really, really simple. <laughs> All right, so the, the outer bits already have um, some break, like broken up spaces. So I think we're good there, but let's let's see here. I'm just kind of putzing around a little. Let's let's break this guy up into two spots like that, and let's make this guy dark. So how am I doing this? You say how do how do I pick which spots are getting dark? I I don't really much have any method one right or wrong way I just sort of whatever I'm feeling like at the moment I also think it comes um, with a little bit of practice although I don't do gemstones often um, okay so I just sort of colored right over that um, <laughs> so since this guy is dark let's actually make it darker like black this is the center of the stone so let's create some surface area now and maybe this guy will be darker and the great thing is is this is a practice sheet right so the reason I did this is because if you're not sure at all about, let's, let's do a, I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, if you're not sure at all about what you're doing, that's, that's what practice sheet is all about. This is a low key way to practice so that way. You're not worried about trying something new out on your pages. You can pick one that's, I try to draw all sorts of shapes. You can try and pick one that's similar to the shape you're dealing with in a book um you know and go from there hopefully that helps take some of the pressure off because i know like trying new things especially shiny things i don't know why they're so intimidating so i felt like if we had like a space where it didn't matter how we did um might be a little more approachable So you can you can definitely just follow along with me and color where I'm coloring or you can make up your own there's no right or wrong way um, the great thing about gemstones is that they seem to appear very randomly dark and light um, I just try and make most of the light areas at the area closest to the light which I didn't really establish in this one so I guess that's coming from this way too um, my bad I just sort of went at it, didn't I? Um, yeah. <laughs> We're just having fun. Oh, all right, Astro Guy. So, um, I'm sorry I'm putting you in timeout. That's not appropriate. And sorry, Steve, you as well. Yeah, I see that. You guys, uh, oh, you reported him? Is he really a troll? Or is he just, uh, all right, Kenny, you can ha help me out today. <laughs> there you go. Um, 
if if yeah, if they're a troll, Kenny, go ahead and just uh block them. I made you a mod. Okay. <laughs> uh okay, so where were we? I'm sorry I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Okay, so, so, yay, troll land. Um, so, you can see here, just sort of cleaning up that spot there. I have a, a line here. Where do I, how do I want to do that? I think I'll just do a really light spot there in that corner. Alright, and again, I have a spot here. I want to make that sort of light at the bottom, like the light is passing through it. But I'll just highlight that top area there. Okay, so I feel like this diamond might be getting a little bit too um, dark in some spots. So luckily we have our handy dandy. I have here just a regular Uniball Signo White Gel Pen. You can use any kind of gel pen you like. I'm just going to prime this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kenny's good at modding. I know she is. I've seen her in other channels. So now you have the uh, full power to just do whatever you, you need to do. Okay. And so I'm just going to kind of highlight that corner there. And um, I'm also going to put some just random streaks right through that really dark spot just to sort of brighten it up a little and make it have some contrast. I hope that you guys can see this okay. Um. <laughs> All right, yeah, Kenny is one of my long-term uh, chatters. She has been with my channel for a long time, so that makes sense that you help me out. Okay, so we have two diamonds. Does anybody have any questions? Do you think that I should keep going on them? Do you hate my guts? No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> that one we only used one color. Let me write it down. It was black. So there's a lot of different ways to um, do the same job. Let's see. Hi, Marsha. <laughs> All right, let's get going on to some fun stuff. So you guys asked for a ruby, a sapphire, and amethyst. So most of these I have never drawn before. So that's okay. What I'm gonna do is go ruby. I have here, oh, I have here just uh, an old iPad here. So what I'm looking at, here we go. Look, we have one that's really similar here. So let's do this guy. You see that? It's just a really simple, um, I don't know if it's actually, that's not a photo. Let's find a photo. Sometimes the renderings look too clean. Here we go. Here's a photo. Diamond shaped paperweight. That's glass. Hold on, looking for a real ruby. Man, it's hard to find real ones even online, huh? Sorry, guys. We don't have to find the exact. Here we go. Here's a jewelry website. So, because I'm not selling this page and I don't plan to, um, we can use non stock photo images to look at to learn from um but if you're if you're trying to sell your work then you would should stick to stock photography um but this is a a real ruby from a jeweler's website so you can see let's just observe for a moment so when i'm looking at um, a reference what i look for is so you can see inside and you can also see the surface areas there's a lot of again dark and light it's broken up into a lot smaller shapes. So let's try and just not focus too much on reproducing that, just getting the general idea and um, doing our own thing. So let's zoom back in. 
How's that zoom? We can use this guy here. Yep, these are color pencils. Kenny, I'm using the Crayola color pencils. <laughs> uh huh. Yep, so we're going to use, um, we're just going to keep going with the Crayola. We have here these colors. Um, yeah, I was doing diamonds, Kenny, so I was using slate black and um, like a pale blue for this guy. So you can see a little bit of the blue. No problem, Leslie. I hope you sleep well. Yeah, so we were just doing diamonds. So now we're doing a ruby. So we'll do C here. Um, <laughs> yeah. Good morning, Michelle. Oh, Sammy was streaming. Okay, awesome. Sammy. All right, so I'm going to pick this mahogany color. I also want, let's see, where's the dark brown? We're going to need a couple of colors here. Oh, that's dark chocolate. That's not quite. So I'm just, I have here my little chart that I made myself. So I'm just going to pull some colors. Let's see. Red. That's not red, that's red and orange. There we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think I have the colors I want. I've got four colors I've pulled. We'll see if I use them all. The ones that I did pull, these are all Crayola color pencils. So red. Oh, excuse me. Mahogany. Dark brown. And black. So even if you don't have the Crayola color pencils, you can use any other brand. There's probably similar colors in just about any brand that you have. Yay, coloring and lurking. That's good. I love my lurkers. Uh, all right, Steve, that's enough. Uh, here we go. Hello, welcome everybody. We've got Meredith. Hi. Who else came in? We've got Susan and Sammy. Hello, ladies. Thanks for coming. So let's have the light source. Um, let's just pick it first. We'll have them come in from over here this time. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we have... I already drew in, in this particular one, I drew in some of the interior shape. So we can just go along with that. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do though, is uh, just gently shade, I have here the black, or I'm sorry, the dark brown. So let me write that down, dark brown. And again, um, just like the Gears one, I will be making my notes available. So you don't have to worry about writing them down if you want to go ahead and skip that. Um, after the whole series is done and the page is finished, then I'll just put my notes up on uh, my website. So, and for those of you who are just coming in, if you want this page, yes, it was Susan's birthday a little while ago. If you want this page for free, there's the freebie you can download. So you can practice right along with me. All right. 
right? So we're just filling in. Now for this guy, I kind of want that to be bright, so I'm going to leave it. Let's. I'm just trying to pick where the darks are going to go on the outer face elements, the ones that are closest to us. So let's choose... So when I'm doing this, I just try and choose a facet side and just sort of shade that in. Okay, so now it's starting to look like it's coming together. Now I want to go ahead and choose um, the darker spots that'll go on the interior. So these are smaller shapes that we're just going to create. And um, they're going to be, you know anywhere we want. Again, there's no right or wrong. So here's a darker shape here. Now I'm using the dark brown still. We will go in later with the reds. I just like establishing the darks first. And um, yeah, so <laughs> this is kind of, so what I'm doing is I'm looking at that reference photo we picked and I'm trying to pick areas where it's, how do I explain, where it, I'm not trying to reproduce it exactly. I'm just trying to kind of give it the same flavor. So here's an interior shape here. So like in our reference photo, it's not exactly these shapes that I'm doing, but that's okay because really nobody's going to be looking at the reference photo but you, so you don't need to reproduce it the way it's, it's, it is in the picture. So as long as it has a similar feel, look and feel. Now the top of the gem is hitting most of the light so it's going to be the lightest shape but I still do want to create a little bit of some hint back there so I'm using a real light touch with this brown and same with over here where we had that shape let's just extend it up but again I'm not going to go right to the edge let that top shape kind of have like a shiny edge to it Okay, so we have another shape over here, but let's switch on over. Um, yeah, Pat, that's what we're doing. We're just practicing. Uh, hi, hi, Kathy. Hello. Um, yeah, Dusty. Uh, if you need to talk, we're always here. Just uh, DM me after the show and we'll chat whatever you need to do. Um, let's see here. What's going on? I'm sorry, I'm missing most of the chat. Yeah, Alfie. We, we all miss Alfie. I'm so sorry, Susan. I can't even imagine losing him on your birthday. Ugh. Um, oh, I forgot to write down the name here, Mahogany. So this says it's Mahogany, really looks like a dark red to me. Um, all right, Astro, I think you've done enough here. Yep, we're good. <laughs> oh, I don't waste time with that. Kenny, I just blocked him, so we're good. Um, so we're switching over to Mahogany. Yeah. Don't worry, you guys. 
I don't let anybody talk smack about anybody in here. If that happens, you get blocked. <laughs> no need for that. <laughs> you got it. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're starting out light, but we'll deepen it up as we go. I like to err on the side of the light touch because you can always add more, but it's hard to take it away. There is an eraser, but I find it easier just to layer. Okay, so now we're getting in the color, Kenny. No more diamonds. All right, and I don't think I've drawn very many rubies like ever, so this is cool. Again, we're learning together. And I don't know why my voice is doing that today. I'm really sorry about that. Let me take another drink. Um. <laughs> Kenny. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if anything goes against the chat rules, you can warn them if you want. But he's been warned already. He was put in time out by me before. And he knows it. So you only get a couple of chances, and then you're in the the ban zone. Uh, I'm all about having fun here. There's no need to be rude to people in my chat. So if you can't handle that, you can be quiet. You're free to lurk. There's nothing wrong with lurking if you can't keep your mouth shut. But, uh... Well, I guess if you can't keep your mouth shut, you might have trouble lurking. We'll see about that. But, uh... Yeah, there's no need for that. <laughs> I don't know. Thanks, Kayla. Uh... Yeah, Kenny, feel free to block them. I can unblock people if I feel like it was the wrong call, so that's fine. If people are trolling the chat, you, you've now the power. Kenny has the power. Guys, be careful. Don't mess with Kenny. <laughs> okay, so now we've got... Um, let's do, let's do a, a corner here that'll be dark. So this area is light right there, and I really like that spot. So let's go and make this little tr thing that's happening. Let's make that dark. Mm -hmm. And then just to go along with him, since this corner sort of continues that, let's make it dark, but let's just add a little shimmer on the edge of that. So what I did is I just skipped the edge don't go right to that line that we already did. Now I'm bearing down and putting pressure on the bottom area here. Let's also layer some of this color over right here. Like so. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Kenny. <laughs> I didn't intend to embarrass you. I <laughs> just figured, you know, you know my channel really well by now, so you would be a good mod. Um, okay. So now I'm just picking this corner here. And actually, that coincides with this line here, so... Let's just carry it up. I'm again skipping right around those lines where we have um, for the outer facets, if that makes sense. I don't know if any of my words are making sense right now, but I'm trying, guys. Okay, so we have... Um, 
Yeah, this is fun. I don't know, I'm just picking random spots that look like they need to be darker. <laughs> okay, so we have here this this facet right here. I want to make this um, area at the top the lightest. So in order to do that, I need to make everything around it darker. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to start first by just coloring these facets just right below it. And again, the key to gradients is just varying your pressure, so you can just layer it more and more, or you can just slowly press harder as you get closer to the area you want dark. <sighs> Let's see here. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm out of... Yay! Thanks, Michelle! I've got to go for now. Oh, don't be sorry. <laughs> don't be sorry, Kayla. And have a great day. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> Good morning, Jacqueline. <laughs> oh, thanks, Michelle. Well, I love you guys too. There's a lot of love in this room after we kick the trolls out. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> so this is coming together slowly but surely. Um, so the, the key here is just to, again, moderate the lights and the darks. Now, you saw from the reference photo, there's very little to no white anymore on this gem. So that's where it really differs from the the diamond but even though there's no white in the photo in order to make it look shiny I do like using a little bit of white in my drawings so what I'm gonna do is still use some white but just in a very much more limited way than I did with the diamond so I'm just slowly working my way into the white area that I want to preserve by just lightening my pressure up as I get closer to that spot. And then we're going to darken up our pressure as we get to the spot where we want it darker. So that's sort of what I'm going for. Um, now we could darken it again a little bit more. Maybe we'll do that with the red, we'll see. Um, but let's keep moving here. So I wanna do same kind of treatment up here for this guy. Now this I want to break up into a couple more smaller parts. I don't know why, but let's just let's go back to our um, actually let's go to black. Let's grab the black here. So I'm introducing a new color black. All right. Um, oh, see you later, Sue. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. So let's use the black here. Let's make this corner real dark. Now what's great about the Crayolas is that because they're wax based, they do blend really well. So that was easy. Yeah, I kind of like that. Okay, let's make some more dark spots because I don't know, it's fun. So let's make this spot dark. It was already dark, but let's make it almost black. I think this will really give us um, some nice depth with this. Let's, let's make another weird little triangular spot black. I like, um, I don't know why I like using triangles in gemstones. I feel like it accentuates. I don't use a whole lot of squiggly shapes. I use a lot of straight lines and I don't know why, but 
like little tiny little cute triangles. I don't know why they really speak to me in this format, but let's put another little triangle there. Um, how about right here at the edge of this shape? It's another funny little spot. We could put a dark spot. <laughs> So you can see there's really no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. I'm just sort of putting them wherever. Um, <laughs> just sort of using my feeling about it. What I want it to look like. <laughs> I know that's not really helpful. Hi, Katrina. Hi, creative. <laughs> Yes, what, what name can we call you? <laughs> well, creative's already got the gist of it. Hi, Michelle. <laughs> That's great. Hi, Joey. I think I said hi, but if not, hello again. Hello, hello, everybody. Okay. So we're, we're having fun not getting blocked by Kenny today. Um... <laughs> Sorry, Kenny. You're fine, though, really. <laughs> okay. So we're. I'm just going to start making some more dark spots here. Let's see. Maybe this guy here wants to be. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you guys are great. Hi, Christina. Oh, I'm sorry you had a rough night. Well, I hope we can cheer you up a little bit, putting some sparkle in your day, so to speak. <laughs> okay. All right, let's make a little bit of a shadow. So this guy's laying on his side. The light's coming from this way. So let's start at the, the point here. We'll give him a little bit of a shadow underneath. So I'm mostly using the flat of my pencil. And we're going to add some red into the shadow because the light will reflect the color that it's, uh, as the light passes through, it'll pick up that red color. So let's go to red. Boop. Let's add that in to the mix. So now we've got our four colors we pulled. Let's just go right on over the whole thing. And I'm just kind of ignoring that C we made. That's just to mark where we're at. We can always darken that up later if we need to. Okay, so now let's use this red color in other spots in our little guy here. Oh, I appreciate you too, Christina. Uh-huh. Let's see. Looking it on screen, it's not quite right. Let me just fix up the shadow. It's funny how you guys are seeing such a more zoomed-in version than I am. Makes me a little self-conscious. It's like, oh, I don't, I don't see all those flaws. What happened there? <laughs> it's okay, though. Now, remember, guys, this is practice, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, let's swatch back over to black. Uh, switch, 
switch back over to black. So you see in the in this particular shadow, I've created a little bit of a pocket of lighter color. That's where the light would be passing through. A little bit brighter there because we've got that light spot there. So I'm trying to kind of mimic the way it would look. Okay, switching back over to red. So the great news about these color pencils, even though they're budget pencils, they do layer really well. Okay. <laughs> oh, what did I do now? Uh... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know what I did, but yeah. Lols. Okay. So we're, we're uh, still using the red here. We're just going to go in and punch up some of these colors now. Now that we have an idea of where we want shadows to go, let's make this ruby really red and not just sort of pinky pretending to be red. So let's color right in there. So you'll see I am still leaving some of the white like right here, but we're going to really go for it now. Okay, and we have over here, let's switch to mahogany and let's go right along here. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, awesome, Marion. Well, this is the stream for you then. Hello, hello. Oh, okay. I think Astro is back. Mm -hmm. So, Creative, you're in timeout. One more strike and you're out as well. <laughs> Sounds like the same person though, same wording. We're not dumb, you know. <laughs> as much as you might think. Okay. <laughs> That's okay, Kenny. Uh huh. Oh, okay, Shannon. All right. Well, let's see. I can't do anything about it right now. But as soon as they speak again, we can just block them as well. So that's cool. All right, let's do something with the top of this guy. It's it's looking a little lonely up there. So let's do some lighter. Now, remember, this is going to be the lightest part of the gem. So I'm just going with a light touch. And skipping some, you know, areas to kind of create some white in there on the top. So now we know how light it's got to be, so we want to definitely make this darker. 
Let's do a little bit of fun shapes. I don't know what I'm doing, you know, typical. <laughs> We're learning as we go, folks. <laughs> it's good though. It's good to go outside of your comfort zone and try new things. And, you know, if it doesn't go great, remember, we're just on a practice page, so it doesn't matter. Um, we always learn even from our mistakes. So if you just look at it that way, then we're doing something right, even when we're doing something wrong. <laughs> uh, oh, it's okay, Lee. Yeah, I get trolls. It's fine. I don't take it personal. Uh-huh. I think every channel gets them, so... It is what it is. <laughs> okay, so let's darken up this spot here. How about down here, too? Just breaking up some of those whites since the the photo really does not have any white at all. I'm trying to keep my whites to smaller spots. Okay, so I don't know if you guys are bored yet, but we're going to do some more colors. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and, um, oh, let's see, I'm missing some stuff. Uh, yeah, that's okay, Kenny. <laughs> I try. I try to watch out. <laughs> Sammy. Well, you never know. I mean, I, I don't know what people find interesting or, you know, what, what's like snooze fest. So. Let's see here. <laughs> I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so I think we've gotten this guy kind of cleared away. He's basically got lots of reds with just pops of white. Um, let's use my white gel pen again. I'm just going to go really just quickly... So what this does is it just sort of gives it that extra oomph right at those edges. Let's do... Okay, so that's it for that guy. Um, so... <laughs> Hey, Christina, I've had people make fun of my singing. I've had people make fun of the way I talk. I've had people make fun of my hands. and my, Like, anything that someone can pick on, they've done. So, yeah, if you're going to YouTube, you just have to keep in mind that people are going to pick on you no matter how good or how bad you are. And, um, you know, that's just kind of the way the world is. Unfortunately, I've learned to just sort of ignore the things I can't change. Um, I do listen to constructive criticism, but um, the things like my voice, I can't change that. So it is what it is. If you guys don't like it, they can move on. 
So there's that guy there. We're starting to get a little collection of uh, gemstones here. <laughs> it could be Chai. I'm not, you know, I'm no um, psychologist. I can't really tell you why people do what they do. The only thing I can do is tell you how I react to it, which is usually ignore it. <laughs> Um, sometimes I've had comments that I thought were a little bit rough, and I admit they did affect me momentarily, but luckily I have some wonderful friends and family who remind me of what's really important, and so, um, like this last time I had a, a pretty bad troll, I went to Sammy, and she was like, don't worry about it, and I was like, you're right, that was the end of it, so building yourself a group of people who support you and love you um that's a really great way to sort of inoculate yourself from the mean people who just don't care about you unfortunately it happens in life okay anyway moving on um <laughs> yeah oh thanks susan yeah you just have to ign ignore them uh Okay, here we go. Welcome back, my troll. Let's just make sure I've got the right person. Yay, all right. Creative channel is no longer able to speak. You may watch. <laughs> Watching no speaky. Okay, there we go. Yep, it does. It definitely does. It more than out outweighs it. <laughs> I know, Susan. Okay, let's move on to Sapphire. So, um, let's see. Should we do the big one or should we move down into the... the? Look, I, get, I gave you guys tons and tons of space. Oh, wait. Let's darken up that. See that. We can see it. Get it. See our... Okay, sorry. I'm really bad today. See our... See? See? See our... See? Okay. So... <laughs> so do you want maybe like a smaller one for the sapphire? <laughs> Peace out. Yes, exactly. Peace. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry, that was funny. Um, that's all right, Meredith. <laughs> all right, let's do a sapphire. Let's pick... Let's do a one in the middle. Let's do this guy. Let's just change it up a bit. I'm I'm done with being up there for a while. Let's go to let's make this D. Okay. <laughs> so here we'll we'll do this guy as a sapphire. I hope you guys. All right, cool. Let's zoom in so that you guys can see. That looks all right. Let's do it. Let's do it to it. So let's, I'm grabbing my color list again and just sort of pulling out what I think I'll need. So I definitely want the dark blues. We want blue and navy blue for sure. Indigo maybe. Blue. Sapphire. Sapphires are really pretty. I've only done a couple of these too, actually. So that'll be fun. Um, I don't know, Michelle. It could be. <laughs> or maybe he's having a really bad day, but he can come and email me if he really wants to come back on the good list. But yeah, let's grab black too. Because, you know, we like having contrast in our sparklies. Okay, I think that'll do for now. So I've pulled a bunch of blues. We'll see what we use. Um, I'm going to start out, though, with indigo. Oh, wait. That's a navy blue. I wanted indigo. This guy. You gotta love it. We're still using the Crayolas. But you can find similar colors in any set that you have. 
Yeah, I don't know, Meredith. I can't really explain why people do what they do. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we have here a nice uh, faceted gem. Um, so let's just get to work. What I'm going to do is, again, same technique I've been doing. So let's find the darks first and then sort of work from there. So um, this here is the front face. So what I'm going to do, let's pick our light source. We can have it coming directly from the top. And the reason I'm choosing different light sources, I just want to give you guys a variety of different ideas. But there's no right or wrong way. You can, whatever light source you want, that's what you do. It's actually, let's first deal with these outer facets. I'm just shading right along the top here. Let's do this little triangle. <laughs> oh sure try yeah it'll be up uh, after the stream is over it'll be available as long as you need and um yep the download will be the free download page it's right here for anybody who missed it that there will be available until the end of the month so you can go ahead and snag it and print it and color along um, after that, I'm going to actually have a package of different coloring pages available at the end of the month on my Etsy shop. So you can also get it that way, but go ahead and get it for free right now. <laughs> Why pay for it? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm just sort of randomly picking. What I did there is I just wanted to establish the front face, which I think is something like this, actually. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so just sort of trying to get a sense of where my darks are going to go. Um, let's start breaking this up now. Just like the other ones, let's put in some dark darks. And we want to leave some bright highlights. So let's just start picking. Let's see, the light's coming from here, so let's have a dark spot. Right here, maybe. I'm just gonna make that dark. So right now I'm not focused on, on bringing them all up to the darkness level that I want, but rather I'm just worried about picking where they're going, if that makes sense. So let's choose another one. Let's see here. Let's do this one. <laughs> it's like the sun is going in and out of the clouds today, so I'm sorry if the light keeps changing. And it is out of my control. <laughs> All right, Chai. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's go, let's see. I don't know. I kind of want to let those guys, let's do one right here. Let's do this dark. 
So I don't really have any rhyme or reason. I'm just trying to kind of spread out the darks and the lights. That way they're not all in one spot. But keeping in mind the light source is going to be there. So we want sort of the darker areas to be... The light's going to pass through it, right? So I'm going to leave a light area there, and a light area here, and sort of work to the sides. So let's make this triangle. Let's actually split them in half. Let's make that dark too. So you'll see when I approach these um, sparkly bits, just to re really keeping in mind that you need darks and lights to make it look sparkly. That's the biggest trick right there. Once you get that bit, once you're not afraid of grabbing the black, even on colored gemstones, it really does help. So let's do that actually. Let's grab the black. Let's put our money where our mouth is, right? Black. Oh wait, I gotta write down what we were just using. We were using indigo. Gotta keep on top of my list. And black. All right, so let's grab the black. Oh yeah, multitasking is tricky. <laughs> so let's let's put some black right here. Let's let's just pop in a nice little triangle here. Like so. And then we can layer that with other colors too. Do just some random spots. <laughs> and you see, I don't always go all the way up or fill in the area all the way. That's fine, too. Um, hmm. <laughs> kind of want to keep that pretty bright, so we'll leave that alone for now. But maybe, maybe let's do... the spot here. Okay. And um, let's also do another, let's do where we want. Do this guy. So what's cool is you guys can follow along with me, and then once you get the hang of, of the method, I think hopefully you'll be able to carry this through to other pages, different color gems. But we're going to try and cover as much as we can. That way it kind of gives you a good sense of it. Um, let's see. Oh, you're so welcome, Michelle. Awesome, Shy. Yeah, I have her book too. Um, yeah, when I get overwhelmed, uh, I do, um, I write myself a to-do list. And Kenny's right, when you take one thing at a time, it does make it easier. Uh, let's, let's do, I don't know, I'm feeling this little spot right here. I don't want to do the whole thing, but let's just shade some of that there darker. I don't know. <laughs> uh, let's, let's do, where else do I want? I'm feeling like maybe this side. This should be darker here. Mm -hmm. 
All right, I want to fill that with a lot of blues, but let's, let's add maybe right here. Let's add a little darker. Okay, I like that. All right, let's switch to, let's do a lighter blue. Let's fill some of this in. Um, so I'm switching to true blue. Hi, Natalia. Welcome. And I know this color is named similarly in Prismacolor, but we are still using the Crayolas. So let's go ahead. The areas where there's light will still be color, but it'll be a lighter color. So let's go ahead and use this very pretty blue here. Hi, Cindy. Uh, Cindy, the link to the free page is right here. So you can go ahead and grab that. Yep, you got it. <laughs> uh, that will be free until the end of the month, and then it will be available on my Etsy shop. So if it's after Halloween for you and you are watching this in the future, then you can get it there. <laughs> ah, okay. Let's see. Let's try adding some of this blue right in the middle here. Okay. And we're going to need to add some more darker blue again, but let's just keep sprinkling this color around for a little bit more. So what I'm doing is I'm focusing on the facets and trying to get all of those edges defined, either by leaving them against a light and a dark area, adding a gradient, something, just to sort of define them better. Okay, let's switch to, you're welcome, Cindy. Um, we've got blue here. So I'm gonna add that to the list. Blue. this guy here over here I don't know why I just feel like having it that color okay so I'm going over this black that I put down earlier with a blue 
So I'm going to try and do that wherever I put down black. I want to add a blue tone to it. Sort of like what I did with the reds, where like I went over it with red colors to kind of bring it into that color spectrum, if you will. I rarely ever leave things just pure black. Um, it's because in, in nature and, you know, reality, things are rare, rarely ever black or white. Um, so we leave some of the white of the paper, we leave some black, but I like to make everything have just a touch of color if I can. So let's do that over here to this black. We already layered it with one blue, but let's layer that darker area with a darker blue. Okay. So I'm leaving some whites, but let's, let's kind of break this up a little bit here. what's going on oh oh we have another one <laughs> thanks Kenny I see well you know let's just ignore that though we'll find another hobby hopefully soon enough I do recommend coloring if you need a hobby. It's very relaxing, keeps your stress levels down, and you're too busy coloring to be mean to other people. So that would be my go-to. I mean, you know, I might be a little biased, but just saying. Just saying. <laughs> all right let's see so now what I'm doing is even though I do want some lighter areas I'm breaking them up into smaller bits because really this is definitely a colored gemstone and we want it to appear that way we don't want to make it feel like a diamond Let's see. Um. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Yes, it is a whack a troll day, huh? Yeah, shy. I guess I just ignore them because I'm, you know, I'm trying to have fun and not worry about it. Trolls can't get to me if I don't let them, so I don't care. All right, I'm switching to indigo. We've already listed this before, but I'm just going to swap to it. Slightly darker than the color we were just using, so just allows more contrast range. So now I'm just starting to darken up some of the areas. Um, let's do this guy here. About this black feels too. Black and not blue. Same with this guy here. Let's cover those blacks with a blue. I 
I feel like whenever you start to use just pure black or gray, it kind of starts looking like a diamond. So I just try and get all that sorted out if I can. All right, let's color this spot here darker. How about right here? He's still sleeping. This is good, guys. She was having quite a morning, so let's see. Let's make this darker. So now I'm really pressing down and just putting some oomph into that. Let's get some nice deep blues going because really when I think of sapphire I think of that really rich dark blue so let's take it there now let's do this little little guy here let's make that really dark and uh, how about, how about this little triangle in there? Let's make that real dark too. Uh, oh, who? What's happening? I don't even see them. Oh, okay. I see them here. There we go. No big deal. There we go. No big deal. Kenny, <laughs> we were both, Kenny and I both had our head down. We didn't really notice, but yeah, we're good now. We're good, Ken. <laughs> Kenny. <laughs> yep, I'm not worried about trolls, guys. Eventually they'll give up when they learn they don't last very long here. <laughs> oh man. It's that kind of day, huh? All right, so we're getting there. This is starting to look more sapphire-y. Sapphire-y? Is that a term? I don't know. I just used it, though. That's what we're calling it now. That's all right, Kebby. <laughs> they always do it when we're not noticing. <laughs> Sammy, I think it's just that I have I have more people in the chat than I'm used to. So I think it's, I think they go into whatever live streams have a lot of people in them, I think is what it is. I don't know though. Honestly, I, I can't really understand why people troll. Um, but that, that's, you know, between them and themselves, I can't really answer that. <laughs> We're good though. I don't care. All 
All right. Kind of want to work this guy out out of there. That's better. So here's a demonstration of the one trick that I've really been hopefully expressing um, throughout the course of this tutorial series. I put here a bit of really dark, this is black with blue over it, right next to a pure white spot on the paper. It's they're not, they're not taking up a lot of space, but by putting them next to each other, it just makes it feel so shiny. And it's just such an easy trick. So if you're struggling with making something look shiny, say you've taken all the whites out, go ahead and just pop some gel pen in and I'll show you, I'll do a little bit of that too. So let's make this a little murky. Like you can't tell what starts. Say, say it doesn't look quite right to you. No big deal. Really easy way. Let's just prime the pen. Really easy way to make it look shiny again. Let's just pop a little bit of gel pen right over the spot where maybe you lost some definition. Let's just... Uh, <laughs> really easy little trick. Thank you, Kenny. Let's swap back over to True Blue. This is a more greeny blue. I'm just going to go over some of the white spots now with this blue. Just to kind of give it more color. All right, maybe some more color right here. And let's break up all of this over here with some different color. So you see, I'm just looking where there's clusters of things that are too similar to each other and just sort of, I call it breaking it up. Like I, like I take it from being one big mass to hopefully making it a little bit different from each other in some spots. Okay, so the last thing I want to do just to really make this look shiny, especially on the top, is I'm just going to go across the top facet with just a little bit of gel pen and maybe a couple of dots. <laughs> super fast and easy when you zoom out you'll really see um, just gives it a nice effect there so that's what we're doing for the the uh, sapphire okay so next one we've gotten diamonds and ruby and sapphire let's do an amethyst and we've been doing yes Senka. Awesome, Becky, Steve. Thanks, Dusty. Thank you, guys. Yeah, when you zoom out, when you look at it up close, you see all the little imperfections. But really, when you look at it, you know, normal view, you're like, oh, that doesn't look half bad, huh? Okay. So let's do, we've been doing a whole bunch of um, like cut gemstones. So let's, amethyst can be a natural crystal or a, um, or a cut gem. So let's just do a natural crystal just to have some fun and change it up a bit. So we'll mark this as E. E. We'll do a little E over here. We're going to do amethyst. Let's see here. And it's almost at two hours. Oh my goodness, where did the time fly? So we'll do an amethyst and then we're going to pick this up again later. Thanks, Anne. Thank you, guys. Oh, let's see. Hi, Shara. Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. Awesome. I'm glad. <laughs> Joey, when you zoom in, you'll see it. That's okay, though. Nobody has to be perfect. We are all people. All right, let me put, put away the blues. Put all of our blues away, right? <laughs> 
no blues in this house. Okay, sorry. I'm done with the puns. Um, <laughs> for now. No promises later. Uh, so let's just leave the black out because we've been using black in every gem. So we've been using black and white in all of these. Um, that's the one thing they all have in common is we want to make sure to get that contrast. So dark, dark, slight lights, smash them together and boom, sparkly. It's amazing. Um, so <laughs> let's grab some purples. Let's see here. Uh, okay, good. Haven't missed anybody, I don't think. Let's look and see what colors we have. For purple, I like this orchid color. Let's see, do we have a dark one? Ooh. Maybe. Okay. Um, and I kind of want, <laughs> almost like a, let's see, is that, that's a raspberry, or like, let's see, I think I'll use those, let's see what else we come up with. Um, so I think this will be our last one today, and then we're going to pick this up again as a part two. Um, hi, Tammy. Awesome. Thanks for lurking. <laughs> okay, let's do this guy. So I'm sure you guys have seen lots of crystals like this where shape is real basic. You know, you don't really have a lot to work with there. you like, well, a crystal, like, that's really complicated, right? Like, you, I don't know how to explain, but it's it's definitely not um, just those simple shapes, right? So instead of really stressing about making it perfect, um, because, you know, like, the good news about amethyst and other natural crystals that haven't been cut yet is that they have a lot of imperfections in them. So that's something to keep in mind. So let's start out first by just shading. Like, let's let's pick a light direction and let's shade the basic facets. Um, and then we can kind of go from there. Um, let's see, trying to keep up with the chat. Yes, these are the most common in, common in color books. Exactly. So that's why I wanted to pick one of these to get us started on the crystals. Um, next episode that we do of this page, um, we can do a cut amethyst if you want to. Those are really pretty. But I just wanted to do at least one crystal on this guy just to get us going. Um, let's see. Tammy. <laughs> Yeah, Kenny was made mod today because Kenny is in a lot of my streams. She is very dedicated to the channel, and um, and she uh, was here when we had a troll, so she got upgraded. <laughs> oh, I need to plug in my phone. Hold on. We don't want to lose you guys. Okay, there we go. Phone is happy. Yay! Okay, so let's grab violet or purple. It says violet and then parentheses purple. <laughs> so I'm going to write that down. And we're going to use the same technique of finding our shadows first and then um, going... Oh, good. I'm glad you're excited, Shara. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully you find it fun. Um, okay, so let's let's pick a light source. Let's have it come in um, from, let's see, I guess we'll have it come in from the top. We'll do that. So top, like it's shining down right on our crystal here. Hello, triangles. Okay, 
And so I'm just going to do some light shading just to kind of establish where we want the darks to go. I'm using really light pressure because I'm not sure if this is the right color. I think I want it to be warmer, but I've got a selection of different colors here so we can kind of change it as we go. Um, so the first thing I'm doing here is kind of making a dark spot. Uh, I want some of this crystal surface to really feel like it's absorbing the light. So right through there is going to be dark. Now, before I go any further, I want to create some weird irregular irregularities. So there's all this open space. So I'm just going to go, let's see, where are we going to go? We're going to go here and I'm literally just scribbling. Just scribble. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now, do you see I skipped the line here? I'm going to, just like I did with the other ones, I'm going to kind of pay attention and put some light there. So now let's scribble again. This is imperfection, so it can be, you can go up and down. And you're like, oh my gosh, I'm ruining it. No, you're not. You're going to make it really cool. So let's, let's do it again up here. This time I'm going to do a small little one. And he's going to go all over the place. And maybe, ooh, so this facet is a different angle. So let's go up a little. Okay. See, you guys see this? Can you? Ah. Thanks, Kenny. Kenny is getting a workout today. Thank you for modding. <laughs> Hello, anybody that just popped in. We've got um, Tammy. Hello. Yes, uh, we have all the colors written down. We're using Crayola color pencils today, so I've written them all down here on the side. So when we're done this series, you guys will again have access to a download, a free download where um, you can see all of that. So let's swatch, swap to, I um, swap, swatch, uh, to another color I have here, Orchid. I'm writing it down, don't worry. So we have Orchid here. And um, I think this is a better, warmer color. I think the other one was um, a little bit too blue. So let's, let's switch to this guy. Um, and let's just sort of define the bottom here. So <laughs> how do I want to do this? I'm just thinking here for a second. So I guess I'll do like a darker spot sort of right in here. Yeah, I like this color a lot. And then let's go. So I'm using up and down stroke. I really want this crystal to feel like it's a natural stone. So he's getting some texture to him. So over here where we put some texture, just on the top areas, let's just add some more depth to it. Leaving kind of the bottom of that bluey color, which I kind of seeing them together I kind of like that so see we can take an accident and make it into a happy accident like Bob Ross says so I'm just skipping the areas where those facets on the front meet but otherwise just pretending like those facets don't exist. I'm drawing through the shape. I don't know why, but I love doing crystals. These are so much fun because I think, because they're not cut, so they don't have to be as perfect. There's really a lot of room for some error there. And that, me being human and all, I prefer a little room for error. Okay. <laughs> so, um, this might not look like much right now. Um, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that, Tammy. 
I hear they have some pretty good treatments nowadays for that, though. So hopefully they get you all sorted out. Okay. Uh, Alright, so now I'm just trying to think here how I want to do this. I think I'll do this one and down with some color because I really want this to be shiny. Let's do the edge here and just to about here I'm going to color this purple but then sort of fade it out so darker at the tip and then fade it out and then Hmm. So these facets at the top where they're close to the light, I'm trying to leave a lot of white in them. But we still need to define the edges of them and make them feel like they are different from one another so just sort of carefully choosing where I put my darks I don't know if you guys can see this too well um oh thanks for coming Meredith yep you have a great day uh-huh okay so I went outside the lines that's totally okay Lines are just a suggestion, guys. Okay, he's fixed. Um, aw, I'm sorry to hear that, Tammy. Yeah, quitting is, a, is really difficult. I quit smoking a long time ago. And I'm glad I did. Um, I'm switching to royal purple. Okay, so now we're going to go and pump, pump in some contrast now. Now let's get going on the real shading. So we have an idea. I want all this in here to feel really light. And then, um, so let's let's do some shading here on this this guy here, I'm leaving a little strip of white. Let's get this bottom facet area covered. So you see, I am just gently layering in the color. What we're gonna do we want this center area to feel really bright and light. And the dark part to be down here at the bottom. So I'm also going to just create some texture by drawing some vertical lines, like lines that go in the same direction as the facet. And let's just define this edge here. Do some more of those lines. Like so. Um, well, that's good. Yeah. Yep, I went to a light and then an ultra light and then I just did a cold turkey. <laughs> it was hell. For like three weeks I was a grumpy boop. <laughs> yeah. I was very, very grumpy. <laughs> I don't think I talked to anybody for like three weeks. But it was worth it for sure. I would do it all over again. Well, not the starting part. That I wouldn't do again. 
I had a chance, I wouldn't have started, but it's okay. That's a whole nother story. <laughs> oh, man. Um, okay, let's put a shadow in because I think shadows really do help a lot with context. So let's put in a little bit of just a gentle bit of purple here. So let's say this is actually laying down and we're looking at it overhead. So let's put him with the shadow on this side too. And the thing is, is like, I know whatever you're maybe trying to practice on, maybe it doesn't have this exact setup. That's okay. Hopefully you'll still be able to take what you learn here and apply it. Um, it's just sort of one of those things. I don't know why I like adding shadows to objects. I feel like it just grounds it in the space that it's living in. Okay, so now let's make this shadow darker with some, where's that one that we started with? Violet, here we go. So with gemstone shadows, I tend to leave a little bit of highlight right around the gem itself and go right outside of it for the dark spot. And it doesn't work in every situation, so do keep that in mind. But in this situation where the light is passing through the object, the direct place opposite to the light source will have a little bit of light poking out. If the object is transparent or translucent, I should, I should mention that. So glass objects shiny crystals, things like that. Really do get this funny little glow about them. And I've just observed that over time. But if you're not sure about something, please do either set up an object and observe it or check out some stock photos or some whatever, whatever you need to look at. There's, you know, a lot, there's a lot of stigma in the community for not being able to draw out of your head and not looking at something, but really every good artist learns, or at least initially by, by um, looking at something. And it's only after like the thousandth time doing it that you can stop. <laughs> I mean, I'm exaggerating, but still, you don't, you don't have to um, feel that need to follow that unwritten rule that isn't really a rule because there are no rules. Well, I mean, there are some rules, but <laughs> that isn't one of them. Uh, yeah, Kathy, I can't drink a cup of coffee without having a nicotine fit, so I quit coffee along with smoking a long time ago. I totally hear you there. It's really hard. Okay, so now that we have the shadow at least somewhat stuck in there, doesn't have to be perfect. We're just trying to give it an environment. Um, so let's use the same color. Just do that right there. I think that's different enough. So here I'm going to go across it like this. 
So what's cool is with um, crystals, you can really kind of get away with drawing lines in. It gives it such cool effects. Uh, so now we got to deal with this. Let's first let's do this outside one. Okay. Oh, excuse me. And um, let's also just define this edge here just a little bit with the same color. Okay. Now let's get into the. Uh, let's get into this here. We're going to switch back to Orchid. Let's put in some more lines there. Make that really nice and punchy and dark. Sort of like Kenny with the whack a troll, huh? Man. <laughs> Oh, I'm missing chat. Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, yeah, Loretta, I've I've quit smoking now for what is it, eleven years going, and it, it does it, it still hits you sometimes. Um. Yeah, I'm glad that I quit. Oh no, Kathy, I threw all of my stuff out. I figured that was the best way to stop. I couldn't keep it in the house. Not that I want it now, but I just, I don't know. Just adding a little more of this color into the shadows. Okay, stop procrastinating, Lauren. Get to it. Okay, so there's a change here. Let's make this a little bit dark right there. Now I'm just putting some random dark scribbles. Again, really scribbling, no joke. Scribble, 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 scribble. Just up and down. Oh, hi. Hi, Abby. Abby woke up. She's right here. Let's see if she tries to get up on the desk or not. Okay. Some more lighter scribbles. Let's see here. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh man, Shara, that's a long time. Wow, Kenny, 44 years. Yeah, it is a really strong addiction. Yeah, congrats to everybody who's trying to quit or has quit. It's tough. It's probably the, one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. Hi, hey, Ed. Oh, that's okay, though. We all got through it. All right, I'm going to swap over to magenta. And I'm just going to fill in some of the spots here. Around these funny little squiggles I drew. I'm just going to kind of fill. Oh, here she is. I knew that was going to happen. 
All right, hold on, let's take you off. Zoom out. Hi. Hi, Em. Kitty break. Hi, guys. Say hi, Abby. <laughs> Abby girl. Be a hi, sleepy girl. Yeah. Are you sitting on my drawing? Yes, you are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Abby cat. You woke up. You're like, wait, where were you? Yep. Sorry. You gonna come in my lap now? No. <laughs> oh man may you're funny uh yeah i had to quit coffee because the two were tied in my brain like every time i had a cup of coffee i wanted a cigarette so i quit both because i would rather quit both than none and it was just so hard for me like couldn't do it oh here she comes hi <laughs> oh Hello, you're on my shoulder. Okay, this is interesting. Has anybody ever had a cat on their shoulder? Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Got kitty on my shoulder. This is going to be a challenge. Hi. Oh, all right. Um, <laughs> back to coloring. Um, so I'm still using magenta. Yep, still magenta. And just adding some warmth to this. Abby, she's so funny. Look at my face, you know, just normal cat stuff. <laughs> Hi, what you doing? Why are you up there like that? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. Pardon me. The, the joys of a live show. What's going on, huh? Purring like a little motor. <laughs> oh, can you guys hear her? She's so happy. Yep, she's like right in my face, on my shoulder, and like kind of like with her face in my face, basically. I'm like, kind of like coloring around her. She's such a cutie. All right, let's switch back over to Orchid. Where are you, Orchid? Here it is. Uh, I'm just gonna bring this color up. To add here, let's put a little bit of color right here on the sides. Hey, honey. Everybody can hear you purr, cutie. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> May, I'm sorry. Yeah, I gained some weight too. I think that's pretty normal. Um, okay, let's put in some dark contrast and then I think this will be done. So let's grab color do I want. Hi. 
just look for her? What do you think, Ab? No, that's not it. Let's go back to... No, that's not it either. Where is it? Here we go, royal purple. <laughs> that's what we want. So now I'm just adding in more contrast. So I'm going to bear down and press hard. So again, just scribbling, scribbling, scribbling. Let's scribble a little up here too. Give it a little extra something, something. <laughs> Happy girl. Alright, I think this is starting to look amethysty. <laughs> uh, uh oh, what did Max say? <laughs> yeah. Plus, really, that's not all as it's cracked up to be. You get sand in places you really shouldn't be getting sand anyway, so. <laughs> oh, May, you're funny. All right, all right, calm down. Um. <laughs> Okay, we're funny guys. Okay, so let's just, I'm just adding a little more purple to some areas, but we're pretty much there, I think. This guy is looking pretty much like an amethyst to me. Uh... <laughs> May. Don't ask me that. I don't know. A little fairy told me. Um. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think that about wraps up our time. No. <laughs> Just kidding. I mean, sort of. Um. <laughs> oh, thanks, Loretta. I'm glad you're you're feeling happy now. I'm so glad about that. So here's what we did today. I know it doesn't look like much, but um, these things do take time. So we did a diamond, another diamond, a ruby, um, a sapphire, and an amethyst. So those are the guys that we got finished today. I have on my list, oh, wait, let me, oh, heavy. Oh man, here she goes. Oh, she's going for the window. Okay, good. So we have a topaz, um, we did some diamonds, we'll probably do some more. We have a topaz and emerald left um, on our list. Is there anything else you guys want to see for part two? Um, thank you guys, thanks. All right. 
as I watch the chat and look for your suggestions, I'm also just going to call out names. Thanks, guys, so much for coming. We've got Loretta, May, Tammy, Kenny. Kenny, thanks for being a impromptu mod. If you don't want to mod for the rest of my channel, just let me know. I'll demod you. Uh, we've got Sammy. Hiya. <laughs> um, let's see. Tammy, I think I said Kathy. Dusty, thank you so much. Yeah, we're going to do oh, a cracked gem. That should be fun. A cracked gem or a cracked crystal? Um, let's see. Cracked gem. Uh, thanks, Joba. I'm so happy. Okay, Emerald we have on the list already. That's great. Thanks for coming, Pat and Shannon and Sanka, Christina, and Joe Beth, of course. Um, Tiger Eye, Cindy, that's great. Tiger Eye we'll put on the list. I do have a couple of smooth stones, so that would be perfect for that. We're oh opal. Okay, yes, um, pearls are going to be in the next, um, so I, I have pearls and shells and sand and rocks are going to be on a different page. I already drew that page as well, so we're going to do that in a separate tutorial. Um, oval shape. Pearls, yeah, pearls are going to come out. Oh, moonstone. And oh, you know what? Somebody asked for an opal. So I'm going to put that on the list. Um, oval shaped. Sammy, so do you want an oval shaped cracked stone? Like I'll, I'll choose where, where's my oval? Like I have an oval one here. You want that to be cracked? I have another oval one. Let's see. Watermelon tourmaline. I've never heard of that. Let's see, tourmaline, watermelon, um, okay, yeah, so cracked oval stone, got it, any kind of stone, or, let's see, uh, thank you for coming, Chai, no problem, have a great walk with your dogs, a rainbow one, Norwegian colorist said a rainbow gem. <laughs> okay. Um, we can maybe do like a clear crystal and that can be rainbow. Um, no, I'm not the master. We're learning together as we go. Um, oh, citrine. We have, um, we have topaz. We can do citrine as well. Anybody else? Carnelian? Okay, I've never done. So all of these are going to be fairly new to me. But um, that's okay. We can learn together. I had never done um, a ruby yet, so that was a new thing too. Um, doo -doo -doo. Okay, turquoise. That's a beautiful stone. Obsidian, okay. <laughs> Aquamarine. All right, we're going to get... So I'll tell you what the plan is. For these bottom crystals here, I'm just going to do a rainbow right across. So I'm going to start with red and just do, you know, orange, yellow, green, blue. So we'll have like a rainbow of crystals at the bottom, but then all these cut gems we can do. I was thinking an opal for this one, um, you know, or we could do like a tiger's eye or something like that. Um, aquamarine we've got. Onx, is that the same as obsidian? Is onx like obsidian? I'm not sure. I'm not sure how Honor is doing, no. I have, I should chat her later.
Linux. I thought Linux, oh, okay, I was going to say Linux is a computer OS system. <laughs> Onyx is black and Obsidian is black. I think I'm going to do just one black stone because they're probably going to look very similar. Um, but I'll put it on the list and maybe just we'll see once I look it up if they look really different. Um, yeah, if anybody talks to Honor, ask, tell her the people who are asking after her in, in my stream, because we all love Honor. Yeah, I hope she's okay, too. Oh, <laughs> that's all right, Christina. Okay, we have a nice list. We have a list that will keep us occupied well into the next stream. So thank you guys for making all your suggestions. If you come up with an idea after this is over, no problem. Just put it in the comments below. I'm going to get to all of them. Um, for those of you um, who missed it, we have the link to the freebie right here. I will also update the description at some point soon so um, you can see that later today. This, after we're done, I will scan it and make all of my notes available to you. Um, I know that we're using the Crayola um, color pencils. Next time we can use another set if you want, or we can keep going with the Crayolas. Um, the reason I chose them is they're a very budget-friendly pencil, and I figure since it's a practice page, maybe you don't want to use your nice, expensive pencils on a practice page. So instead, um, use your budget pencils and then take what you've learned and then apply it to your expensive pages and your fancy pencils. So that was the idea behind it, but um, I am open to whatever suggestions you guys want to see. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it. Thank you guys. <laughs> yeah, so I created a playlist. Um, so you'll see on my channel homepage, now there's a textures tutorials um, list. So I put the gears in there and they were the start to this whole thing. Um, I had a bunch of people requesting gemstones and now shells and pearls, rocks and sand. That page is already drawn as well. So we're gonna do that after this. Um, and then I have a lot of other ideas. So if you have ideas for other textures you wanna learn, stuff that intimidates you or that um, you just don't get you know, you can't wrap your head around. Let's learn it all together. It doesn't have to be something I know. I'm happy to um, learn on the spot as well. So thank you guys. I'm glad that you like it. Um, you're very welcome. Thank you so much. And um, as always, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Have a great weekend. And water drops. Yep. Okay. Putting that on the list. Water drops and liquid maybe. Water drops. All right. Perfect. Um, thanks, guys. We've got May, Christina, Tammy, Kenny, Pat, Sammy. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, Jer Jerry. All right. Bye. <laughs>